All right, today on No On The Ropes, we out here for media day. Yeah, yeah, uh, the, yeah, yeah. the open workout, we got Gary Antoine yeah, Russell. What's yeah, good, big dog? How you doing, my king? I'm good, king. Queens. I know y'all gonna be watching soon. So yeah, my kings and queens, how y'all doing? Hey man, let's jump right into it. Okay. Uh, you're gonna be on the card February 8th with your brothers. Yes, sir. Talk about that whole feeling of working with a, with a great team right there. Uh, first and foremost, I got the best family in me in the world. It's a special night because it's going to be me and my other two brothers. It's another Russell show. You know, he had hurt his ankle. Gary Antonio Russell, he has hurt his ankle. Filled on his steps, a little hiccup, but he bouncing back, you know. He rehabbed it, he wrapping it. And he's saying it's going to be strong enough come fight night. So it's another... Uh, Bermuda Triangle Night type of thing. You know, three brothers. It's a Gary Russell show. It's special. It happened before, but for it to happen again, it's, it's, it's make it even more special. Take me back to your last fight, and how would you rate your performance on your last fight? I rate my performance. Uh, I give myself a B minus. You know, they say the ultimate one is a knockout. Um, of course, I got that, but it's a form of fashion in which it should be displayed. You know, in my profession, it's, it's a common thing for people to get knocked out, or take L's, or get beat up. But it's not a common thing for people to get beat up and make it look good. You know, beat a person up and make it look good. Let me make that correction. Beat a person up and make it look good. You know, execute what you're supposed to do and make it look good. Not get it done. Let's say the execution game plan is to knock the person out. Anybody can just get strong, lift a lot of weights, you go in there, the other guy's tired, your opponent's tired, and you just wing one hard punch and knock him out. Of course you got the job done. But in the gym, you study, you train, you practice how to throw a punch a certain way and deliver it a certain way. You know, and you get in the ring and you do the complete opposite. I don't believe that's the science to the sport, you know. And that's why I say it matters how you execute. A lot of people say as long as you win, that is true. All right, McKean. That is true, it's, it's as long as you win, because your record also uh, is what follows you. You know, and nowadays people just remember the records and not just the fighters that were great. You know, hopefully I'm gonna change y'all, I'm gonna have a flawless record and show that I'm great. You know, I fought against the greats. You know, I am a great. Because uh, one of the things I noticed, because I've seen it a lot, man, you have a great work ethic. You're always in the gym. Of course. Stay in the gym, Monday through Friday, two a days. And with that being said, you see a lot of your peers right now getting those shots at the titles. Even some have titles right now, like a Chakor Stevenson, um, Devin Haney's of the world. Do, where do you see yourself in 2020 with that opportunity to get that shot? Well, you got to realize it's a business. It's a profession. It ain't just people just hopping in rings and, 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 and fighting. And they giving checks. That's some back alley street stuff right there. If you think it's like that, you're completely wrong. The ambulance, the medicals, all of these contracts dealing with the blood work and stuff like that, EKGs and things of that nature, all of that stuff isn't for no reason. It's a business, a profession. Those guys doing those moves, getting titles all fast, they're gonna, they're gonna stop themselves from having a consistent fighting pattern and they're gonna be put on a, on a shelf. I'm starting to fight once a year, things to that nature. I'm proud of them. They got a title, as they should. They all came from the same Olympic team with me, and I knew they was going to prosper in their professional career once they made that transition. But the key to this sport, this profession, is about smart. It's about keeping things continuing and coming out safe and getting your full benefits from it all. And I believe it's a method, the science, to how you go about it. You're fighting once a year, you're not going to get your full financial, you know, reap, reaping from it. You know, so that's kind of, it's a setback. You know, it's interesting that you say that because, you know, speaking of that, how, how do you feel about your brother fighting once a year right now? See, we're different. I'm different. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm goofing on. Uh, now we're different. Uh, it goes back to your negotiations. You know, back to what you know, who you know. And a lot of, a lot of time nowadays, people is going back to who they know, not just what they know. So 
you see people following Floyd, the money team. You see people trying to get on the uh, Clarissa. Clarissa, she's doing a fantastic job. She done walked her own way, honestly. I, I believe that she don't need none of your greats to make her her background to her professional career any brighter. And she's doing it her own. She's undefeated. She got damn near all the titles. Only thing she got to do is move up and take somebody else's title. Because that's what she's doing. She's taking people's titles. She don't have to get out of no Floyd Mayweather banner. She don't have to get out of no Andre Ward banner. She don't have to go out of no Holyfield banner. She don't have to go out of, she don't have to go out of nobody banner. She's her, she's already made. She's a made person already. Only thing she gotta do is keep whooping ass. That's it. You know, speaking of that, on the men's side, so, do you feel like you have to get under a banner to get those opportunities? That's the thing, I'm whipping ass and I know what I know and I know who I know. I know my profession, I know the business, and it's a way you should walk. You know, and a lot of people they just rushing into it. I guess because it's the spirit of the moment type of thing, and they just love the sport that much. They want to get a title. I mean, of course, that's the concept of it. You want to get a title, you get a title, you get more money. More money, you're more comfortable, you're sitting financially. But a lot of times, your, your moves that you make probably not the best moves, you know, and, and it doesn't really justify the means on why you made that move at the end of the day because you'll be taking a loss. How do you feel about your weight division right now? I feel like it's stacked. Your stack is going to keep getting stacked and it's going to make noise. You're going to have a lot of attention. I believe every profession got a breaking point where it's going to drop or get better. It's just a natural, natural cycle, right? They go down and come up. Box about to definitely come up. You got Deontay Wilder knocking stuff out, putting big people on their back pockets. You had Earl Spence before his little crash car accident. He's doing his thing. You had a lot of 147s doing their thing. You had Bunny, you had Adrian Broner attempting it, coming back. You had a lot of noise, but that's when it started dropping, Adrian Broner. We had the new faces, the little, it was a Latino kid before Asian Brown and he had fought somebody else. Then you had the Jojo Diaz, he tried to put the spark back into it and tell the farmers. Now that's like a little flicker, now it's flickering now. It went down here, but now it's flickering. Now you got 140s again coming back out, 147s again coming back out. Like you just got the Charlos, they just fought, they just sparked the 2020 up. You got Danny Garcia about to pop out. Clarissa, she definitely took the icing off the cake. Who? I, I gotta ask you, with, with that being said, who's on your radar right now in 2020? It's a lot. It's a juicy menu. It's a juicy, juicy menu. Who's your top two that you really got your eye on right now? Because I know you work with uh, your, your, with your father and the team. Definitely, they they make the decisions. Definitely. But I don't who, have no personally, main. I don't have no main. It's just like I want to run through all of them. Has anybody called you but out? I know, I know, I can't do that. Has I anybody called called you out? Not to my knowledge, no. Why you, you know, think that everybody, is? I, hey, that's a personal question, a personal opinion. Yeah, you know, I can give my opinion, but it just be my opinion. So uh, what's your say, opinion? Because they feel as though it's not the best choice to take. A lot of people in early in their career, they just coming from the 2016 Olympics, still early in their professional career. So it wouldn't be smart to take a loss early in your career and then you got to bounce back. You know, then you start the journey all over again and even get your name recognized again. So that wouldn't be a smart business move. If anything, it's, they think it's strategic. They probably say, oh, well, he's a nobody, or he's nowhere in his career right now, so why would I fight him? He's a hard fight. You, you can look at it many ways. What am I benefit from? Okay, you're right. What are you going to benefit from? You're going to learn some lessons. Yeah, I'm going to teach you some stuff. <laughs> That's about it. But other than that, what are you gaining? You're really not gaining really much, but uh, confusion to the mind. Hey, be before I wrap it up, man, I gotta ask you about a, about a young talent that's getting a lot of noise right now, Jaleel, Jaleel Hackett. Yes, sir. What are they talking about? So speak about the young the young man and his work ethic. Oh, he's special. He's special. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. 
You know, giving people problems. He giving people problems now. <laughs> I ain't even gonna call out no names because I'm not a bad. Nah, no, yeah, I'm a yeah, real man. Yeah. Come on, I'm not about that. If you if you wanna carry me and take it to the streets, I can handle it accordingly. If you wanna be a gentleman about it, I can handle it accordingly. You know, if you wanna be a bitch about it, I can handle it accordingly. Normally, I just turn up and cheat. I walk off because I wouldn't waste a lot of breath on females unless I really care about them anyway. Mm -hmm. So if you want to act like one, then go ahead and act like one of your own spaces. <laughs> you know, I'm going to handle it accordingly. You know, uh, like I said, he giving people problems now. I got I got wishes for him. You know, I want him to be great. Why am I trying to... You know, one of, one of your uh, recent interviews... Uh, uh, that I had with Lil and his right. father, he talked about, you know, what he had learned from your father and everything and the knowledge that I he I believe his whole comfort zone came from my father. This came from this, this ecosystem right here. Came from this, this nucleus. His whole comfort zone dealing with the boxing world came from the Russian family nucleus. Simple as that. He branched off because kids get older and that's what they naturally do. Birds, and they in the nest, they get older, they naturally fly away when they can fly. They come back because they know where the nest is. But let's be honest, he got a father, it's a nephew. His father was going to pick up his best interest in hand. I'm not saying that his best interest is elsewhere, but he want to do his own thing, individual thing. And I have to respect it. You know, I'm not eating and he feels without an ape. So I was saying, when he eat, don't make you shit. Excuse my French. But well, I'm just trying to make things real clear. You know? And well, you know, one of the interviews I just seen uh, recently uh, with your, uh, well, I heard with your brother, is that he wants to be more active in 2020. He even talked about going up to 135. Y'all better watch out. Look, look, you got me about to spill the tea, man. Man, go ahead and give, nah, it, give it to me, man. man. Come on, man. It's some, it's some juicy, juicy stuff, too. Look, we walking, we walking the walk, talking the talk, and we humble that. Well, we not no flamboyant type of people. We definitely down to earth, enjoy the fruits of life and all that. But you gotta have a cap. You can't just be wild and a loose cannon. You don't got no cap. You gotta have a cap. What, you know? what? I gotta ask you, was you surprised when you heard that? Going from jumping from the 126 up all. to the 135? All, you gotta realize when you spawn and jump and you going against people that's 165, 152, and you fight 126, and you probably walk around fight 130, 132. That's still a big, the whole number weight class, naturally. And he's moving around with these guys and doing whatever he like with these dudes, you know, yeah. because he's just that above oh, wow. as far as his advancement in the sport. Hey, man, I really appreciate your time today, man. Listen. They calling you to the ring listen, now. Yeah, listen. Y'all ain't about to get the juice out of me. Just pay attention. Follow me, Gary A. Russell, on IG. You got me, nobody else. All right, we out. Peace.